Everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And obviously, as you can see, I'm traveling and I hope you're not catching ambient noise because my air conditioner is a little loud. But that's not why we are here today. We are going to be talking about DJI drones because the fate of DJI, eh, we're going to see what happens here. Now, if you're not familiar with this, DJI drones, essentially a Chinese maker of drones, has been banned by the United States government for quite some time. But we have some new information on this, and we're turning to Anthony Ha of TechCrunch for this because, quite frankly, I think this is overarchingly an important one. Now, here's what's going on. Drone maker DJI filed a lawsuit uh, basically this past Friday against the U.S. Department of Defense over its inclusion on a DOD list of, quote, Chinese military companies, end quote. A DJI spokesperson said that the company filed the suit after, quote, attempting to engage with the DOD for more than 16 months and deciding it, quote, again, had no alternative other than to seek relief in federal court. Now, I continue to quote DJI is not owned or controlled by the Chinese military, and the DoD itself acknowledges that DJI makes consumer and commercial drones, not military drones. That's according to the spokesperson from DJI. Now, the Chinese company was added to the DoD's list, as I mentioned. This was back in 2022, following similar actions from other government agents. So, for example, in 2020, DJI was placed on the Department of Commerce's entity list that essentially blocked U.S. companies from selling to it. And it was placed on the Treasury Department's investment block list the following year due to DJI's involvement with uh, surveillance of Uyghur Muslims. The company said it had, quote, nothing to do with treatment of Uyghurs in Zhangjing. So by virtue of that, sure, why not? You can use a commercial drone. You can convert a commercial drone into a military drone. So it would make sense that the Chinese government would buy a whole bunch of these to surveil that population, which is basically considered the most surveilled population on the planet. Now, in its lawsuit, DJI said, <clears throat> excuse me, DJI said that a result of the listing, as a result of this, it had, quote, suffered ongoing financial and reputational harm, including loss of business, and employees have been stigmatized and harassed, end quote. So I can't speak for the employees being stigmatized or harassed, but it does stand to reason that because DJI basically has this uh, footprint or stamp of disapproval by federal agencies, then yeah, they would, they would lose that. And they do definitely do have reputational harm. I'm talking about them as a Chinese military company, which they claim they are not. So the company claims the DOD report justifying the listing, quote, contains a scattershot set of claims that are wholly inadequate to support DJI's designation, end quote. The lawsuit also argues, and I quote again, among numerous deficiencies, the report applies the wrong legal standard, confuses individuals with common Chinese names, and relies on stale facts and attenuated connections that fall short of establishing that DJI is a military company, end quote. So obviously I can't speak to any of that. You know, DJI has every right to take legal action in the legal system here in the United States or anywhere else that they do business. It has a legal framework, which is most places, but here we are. Now, they also said that basically their founder and CEO, Frank Wang, and three early stage investors, quote, together hold 99% of the company's voting rights and approximately 70, 87.4% of its shares. The defense uh, official told TechCrunch, the Department of Defense does not provide information or statements regarding pending litigation. So take that for what it's worth. Now, here's what we understand of Chinese corporations. You can own it 100%. I can own 100% of TikTok, you know, whatever it is, understand that you are a Chinese company. And by virtue of that, you are beholden to the Chinese government in various ways. There was a 2017 law, for example, that was passed in China that essentially said, if you're a Chinese entity, aka a Chinese corporation, doing business outside of China and have information, for example, on non-Chinese anything, meaning foreign citizens, meaning U.S. citizens, whatever, by basically by all rights, the Chinese government has access to that. That essentially weaponizes private corporations coming out of China to do the work of Chinese intelligence or even the Chinese military. So DJI has it, I think, coming both ways. One, they are drones. We can weaponize drones, even commercial drones for military purposes. Look at what the Ukrainians are doing in Ukraine. You can also use them for surveillance, whether it's the Uyghurs, whether it's, you know, some Chinese intelligence official flying a drone over a military base here in the United States. DJI can be used for all of those things. But the other thing uh, side of it is that 2017 law. 
if I'm an avid drone fan of DJI and I'm using DJI's cloud, which does connect back to China from everything that we understand, if I am, let's say, flying that drone and taking video footage and I happen to take footage of that military base, nuclear plant, whatever it is, and it gets into that cloud, then absolutely the Chinese government is going to want it and DJI is required under Chinese law to give it up. So. Here we are, we're gonna see what happens. <clears throat> it's just an absolute mess, but quite frankly, while DJI says that they are not a military company, and that is their opinion, that is their statement, and it is my opinion that, well, you might not say it, but you are, thanks to being a Chinese company and thanks to that law. So here we are, we'll see what happens, and if you're an avid drone fan, hopefully there are other brands you can use that aren't owned by the Chinese. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please follow me and subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please don't stay private. Thanks, everybody.